All right, here we are with the installation step of the Mr. Cool DIY 24K. I've already done the unboxing. I've gotten a list of all the parts that I need. I've still got to pick a few of those up, but I've also went through and figured out where I'm going to put it. It needs to be 90 and a half inches off the ground. And so this is that 90 and a half inches right there. It's about 43 inches wide and then 13 inches tall. So it's going to go in that block right there. Normally you just drill a three and a half inch hole right here and run the pipe straight through there and straight down the wall. The problem I'm having with that though is this square right there or that end of the square represents a metal staircase uh, plateau landing right there that's right up against the outside wall. So I cannot run those tubes straight down on the outside of the wall. So what I've decided to do is I am going to remove this wall panel and I'm going to put the tubing in and run the tubing down inside the wall and then go out. Then I'm going to put the panel back on. Not quite sure how I'm going to work all that yet, but I'm going to figure it out over the next, uh, hopefully, couple of days. Uh, issues I'm running into is wood burning stove. Well, if that thing was hooked up and running, I wouldn't need this now, would I? But I decided I wasn't going to go that way. Didn't have space for it. Uh, this cabinet right here, this has got to come out. I'm going to have to move my bandsaw, my dust collection. <laughs> Got to get this all pushed out that way so I can take this panel off. This shelf right here, this is also going to have to come off everything on this shelf and some of this trim that's just resting on that shelf. So I've got quite a bit of work to do to get to where I can actually start working on this. And so I'm going to try and just montage through it, make it look really fast, but this is going to take a hot minute. So let's get at it and start cleaning some of this stuff, getting it ready for, uh, oh yeah, and these bandsaw blades up here, they got to come down too. So let's get to it, start getting this place ready to install a 24K Mr. Cool. All right, I thought I had hit record. Sorry you missed it, but I ended up using my Dremel with a drywall bit to cut out the place where the line set's gonna go. So I just used a compass to draw a three and a half inch circle. Uh, it's not perfectly round. And I squared the bottom because I want the line set to be able to slide up in there. This is gonna be up there and I'm gonna put the wall the line set up with a bend in there so it'll sit right in there. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out was even though I just freehanded following a line that I drew, if I take the cover, let's say you had made that circle instead of cutting the bottom out, if I slid that in there, that is actually able to cover, there's a little bit of play in there, but it's able to cover all of the cut. If I did this on the outside, and I probably will because I'm not going to buy a hole saw just for the outside, this would cover that entire outside hole too. So right there, I'm able to use, without going out and buying a three and a half inch hole saw, I can just use my Dremel and I probably will cut that one and so you'll get a chance to see that there when I cut that. So let's get back to work. Okay, so there was one screw right here that's just a packaging screw that held the mounting plate to the cassette. But before I, I broke that free, what I did was I wanted to make sure that I lined up right. So I put three screws through right here to show me the side side, because normally you're gonna mark these holes and then just cut where that one says. 
I did it backwards and I just kind of lined it up where it should have been. I was off by about a quarter of an inch, so I took the, uh, when I lined these up, that forced the template to line up. And then I checked these holes where the alignment was. It was about a quarter inch off. I realized I would have still been in the stud, but I want to be closer to the center of the stud. So I just cut that hole quarter inch wider on that side. Then I took this packing screw out, took this and, and put it up, leveled it out. I put two, four screws in it, uh, into the stud. And then I put two more screws lower down because what I noticed was as I screwed in the top up here, it actually, the bottom pulled away. So I just put a screw down here. It's only into the board. It's not into the stud. If it wasn't a ply sheathing that I was using, uh, I probably would have put a wall anchor there, even though it's just cosmetically going to hold the bottom of this thing, hopefully from rattling a little bit. From there, I bent these out. One of the things I would like to note in the instructions, it says make sure that these caps are on. I thought, well, that's silly, the caps are there. I did double check and this silver one was unthreaded almost all the way off. So definitely check those. That is to make sure that nothing, no foreign materials get inside here. So before I bent that out, I did tighten that down. It's not got to be super tight, but just snug on there. Then I bent these out. Because this is going to come right into the wall, this I need to bend instead of pushing that straight through. This needs to be bent to where it follows back into the wall right there. And depending on how this bend turns out, I may need to dig a little bit more of that insulation out. But I figured if I'm gonna screw this up, I might as well do it in real time rather than hyperlapse. It's easier to laugh at somebody screwing up when you can see it in real time. Okay, nobody really talks about bending these pipes. It's actually not too bad. Okay, it doesn't seem too bad. I mean, you can tell the big one is a lot stronger, a lot more firm. But it's, it definitely could be worse. All right, now I'm going to try and get that bend right there a little bit further down. And then this one... It is definitely nerve wracking to do it though. All right, so now I've got my three hoses, my pre-charged lines, my drain line, and then of course my power lines. They recommend having two people to do this. I second that recommendation. Uh, you know what? I am going to uh, adjust the setup up there. Seems there's a lot less room in the shop since I tore everything out to rearrange this. So just being able to see that from the top and look down through here and see those line up, I think that made it a lot easier. And verifying that these went in here where I want them to. Yeah, they went right where I want them to. So that's good. And then there's two plastic tabs down here. That one grabbed really solid. This one just feels like it's wanting to fight it or not fight it just. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this tab. So there's two release tabs right here. A release tab there, release tab there. I'm going to pull this down a little bit more and see if that'll grab. Okay, that, that felt a lot better. So 
the bottom clip down here where it comes off the wall, I just bent that down a little bit more. So the tab that was coming in, the plastic tab, I just don't think it was catching up here. So I just bent that metal tab down until it clipped. But now looking at it, that feels like that side's good. Feels like that side's good. Man. All right, so now I'm in the wall. I did look, this is kind of a controversial topic. Some people said, do not go into a wall. I looked into why, and what I found was that uh, the main reason is, number one, if your pipes aren't insulated, you could get some condensation. These pipes are very well insulated. So right there, that solves that issue. Next thing that they talk about is maintenance. Whereas my wall here is just screwed together here in my shop. I was able to just disassemble this section of the wall and put it back up without being intrusive. If I was doing drywall on this, that might be a bigger issue. If I've got to come in here and fix something right here after I mud and tape all this, that's going to be hard to fix. So that's one reason I would say go stay away from walls. I am not an HVAC expert. I am do it yourself, YouTube taught, learning this as, as I go. I probably shouldn't be making a video on this because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm literally reading the instructions, but that's why you're watching this video is because you want to know if you can do this. So far, I'm thinking this, uh, this Mr. Cool does qualify in my book as do it yourself. Uh, Stick around to the end of the video to see if I actually electrocute myself when I try and hook up the, the wiring because I'm doing it all myself. Where I'm going from here is I'm going to home. I'm going to bed. I'm going to the house and going to bed. What I'm going to do tomorrow though is I'm going to drill a hole there, uh, put some insulation back here, connect the pipes here, run that out down here and then I got to figure out what I'm doing with everything outside. Originally, I thought about doing an S curve back in here, but in this space right here, I don't have room to eat up 24 feet. And granted, eight feet of it's going to be eaten up just by vertical, but that leaves me 16 feet that I'd have to snake back and forth. I don't think I'm going to make that, so I'm probably just going to end up with the coil out back like they say to. So, but the manufacturer says do it in their instructions, so I'm hoping we're good that way. I may run the end unit over to that end of the building, which will eat up another 12 feet, but we'll see how that plays out. For now, I got the cassette up and that was my goal for tonight. We'll see you in the morning.